That night, I was hanging out with three friends, Sarah, Nick, and Mary. We were celebrating Nick's birthday at his place, which happened to have a hot tub in the backyard. After a couple of hours and a couple too many beers, we jokingly suggested skin dipping in the hot tub as some kind of birthday present. It would have probably stopped there if it wasn't for our drunkenness, so we did eventually say, fuck it. Let's do it. Now for context, Nick's house was by a forest and was very isolated from the neighbors. Adding to that, it was maybe past midnight and anything past the Christmas lights of dubious quality that were spread around the yard, it was basically pitch black. Being fucking pussies, going out there without Nick's parents' home would have been unimaginable if it hadn't been for the wonders of inebriation. So semi-reluctantly, I followed my friends into the night with a towel on my shoulder. We reached the hot tub that was worryingly close to the edge of the woods. We started stripping. Everything was fine for the next 30 minutes or so, apart from the occasional branch cracking. We were having fun, telling stories or rambling about stupid shit, and the fear quickly faded away. That was until a deafening shriek came from the darkness of the forest, lasting for about five seconds. It sounded like a human voice, but it almost didn't sound like a person. We all turned livid, became silent for what seemed like hours, and I even saw Nick lose his boner in a matter of seconds. We didn't dare to try and look into the forest, except for Mary. We just grew a pair of balls out of nowhere and picked up her phone to use the flashlight. We couldn't help but follow the light as she pointed it at the forest, which seemed unaffected by it, as if the darkness was swallowing it. Nothing. As we were about to stop looking though, the void stared back at us. Mary shined her light far behind Sarah and it reflected on a pair of eyes and a white form in the distance. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. We rushed out of the tub without even giving a single thought about gathering our clothes. Mary and I screamed. Apparently her balls had been blown to smithereens and we all ran back towards the back entrance as fast as possible. Nick immediately got a knife while we locked every door and window. We wanted to call Nick's parents or the police or anyone but our phones were over by the forest where we'd left them. Seeing no other choice, Nick put shoes on and made a run for it. He'd managed to get his phone, but he heard loud breathing coming from the forest, meaning whatever it was, it hadn't left. What followed were the shittiest two hours of my life. Nick got his parents to make their way home, handed us towels so we could finally cover ourselves up, and we gathered in the basement where there were no windows. We spent most of the time in silence, waiting for something to happen. Half an hour in, we heard another shriek, more distant. Only this time it was shortly followed by knocks on the door that couldn't possibly be Nick's parents. Sarah actually started crying, but thankfully, it stopped after that. The parents arrived and allowed us to sleep in the basement for safety. They hadn't heard or seen anything and we were pretty sure we just imagined stuff. We hardly slept and once the morning came, we went out to get our stuff. The phones, keys, wallets were all there. The only thing missing were Nick's shirt and Sarah and Mary's panties. I wasn't wearing any that night. So that left us with two possible scenarios. A weird pale ass pervert spied on us in an isolated area deep in the woods, or whatever other creepy shit roams in there just decided to spook us. I've been debating about whether to post this or not, but I finally decided that it's been long enough for me to talk about this. This happened to me and my mom a few months ago back in October. It happened in a very rural part of New Hampshire, like a side road on a side road type of neighborhood. It was pouring out as it had been raining for pretty much the whole day. 
My mom had just gotten back from down the street in my sister's car, and I was on the couch in the living room, when suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. Our front door has a big glass pane in the front, so we can look out from the inside, and someone can look in from the outside. Through this window pane, I see a man. I didn't get a great look at him, as I didn't have my glasses on. The man noticed that I had seen him and waved as if trying to be friendly. For the rest of this post, I'll refer to him as Poncho Man. I got up and thought about opening the door for Poncho Man, but relented. As I couldn't probably see who it was, I didn't want to let a stranger into the house. Instead, I went down to the hall to my parents' bedroom where my mom was getting ready for work. She asked what was up, and I explained to her that a man in a poncho was outside our door and wanted to talk to us. She went as white as a ghost. Immediately, she stopped getting ready, closed and locked the bedroom door, and started checking the windows to make sure they were locked. I asked her what was going on. My mom explained that as she was driving home, she had seen the poncho man. He had been standing motionless on the side of the main street. As soon as my mom turned down our road, he started to walk, presumably to follow her. She said the encounter was weird, but thought nothing more of it. Why would someone be out in the pouring rain, down a back road in the afternoon? It was like he was waiting for something. I started to panic as well. My mom called my aunt and asked what she should do. My aunt told her to call the police immediately, and so we did. We proceeded to pace around the bedroom, frantically looking out the windows to see if we could see the poncho man. From where the bedroom was angled, it was impossible to look at the front porch and see if he was still there. We were desperate for anything. After what felt like hours, we finally saw a police car pull up. We carefully unlocked the door and went down to let the officer in. We explained what we saw, and he agreed to do a scan around the neighborhood. As he left, I noticed there was something on the doorknob. I took it off, and it was a political ad for a candidate that was running for office. It is possible Poncho Man was just campaigning for the candidate, but there are a lot of holes in that story. It was pouring outside, so why would you go door to door? And why would you go that route in such a rural neighborhood? The houses are so far apart, you barely make a dent on foot. The time doesn't make sense either. Sure, I and my mom were home, but it was about 4 in the afternoon. Most people would still be at work, so you'd probably get no response from knocking anyway. Eventually, the officer returned. He had found the guy down the road and had questioned him. Poncho Man was able to ID himself, and he claimed that he was a political campaigner was just knocking on doors for that reason. When probed further, conveniently enough, Poncho Man couldn't provide any other door signs, as the one he had left on our house was the last one. That makes the campaign story even more absurd. Our house is in the middle of the street. It's not like we were the last by any means. So why wouldn't you bring enough for the whole street? Even the officer pointed this out to us and said that it was unusual behavior. Although the officer was suspicious of him, there wasn't anything he could do about it, as there were no way to prove his intent. He told us to be alert, and do not hesitate to call if Poncho Man returns. Fast forward a few weeks, and I started noticing that a police car seems to be permanently stationed down the road from us. I got curious and asked my mom about it. She said that there were multiple break-ins into the houses down the road, and the police were doing a sort of sting operation. The poncho man encounter and the break-ins may be unrelated, but considering how poncho man acted, I have a sinking feeling that they are connected. Thankfully, for the past few months, we've heard and seen nothing of poncho man got a new doorbell system with a camera, and the police left the area where they were doing the sting. 
I hope that this whole situation is over and that I never have to meet Poncho Man again. It all started about a month ago when a man started banging on my door at 6 at night yelling for a mic to come out. That he needs to see him and get cigarettes. I told him he had the wrong house and to leave. There has never been a mic in the house. He got even more aggressive, calling me a liar and how he was going to come in and beat that skinny bitch you live with. I tried to call the non-emergency police line because I have never called 911 before and they didn't pick up. Looking back, it was stupid, but it was instinct. After some more yelling, he left. I called my father, who was out on the other side of town, to come home and told him what was going on and he showed up. He called 911 to file a report. The guy came back and started screaming at him. Cops were called again and showed up an hour after the call. They couldn't find him and told me to defend myself if it came to it. I ended up staying with a friend for the night because I didn't feel safe at home. I can be a strong person, but I don't think I can do much against a drugged out man. What made that situation even scarier to me is that as I was going through my driveway camera photos, it shows him walking up to my house hours before this incident and I had no clue. I have really bad anxiety, so the next few days were filled with paranoia and stress. But I managed to finally calm down and convince myself that that was the end of it. Come that weekend, my father went on a trip with his girlfriend, so I was left alone for a couple of days. I had just put on a scary movie when I heard screaming again and a loud bang. I pull up my camera and see that he is back pacing back and forth on the sidewalk and has thrown over our trash can again screaming for Mike. I call 911 and they show up within minutes this time and are able to stop him down the street. They tell me there's nothing that can be done since he hasn't committed a crime yet, but if he comes back again to call again, and then they'll have more reason to hold him. Things were quiet for a few weeks, and I again believed that was the end of it. Until today. This morning, my father and I got in an argument, so I wanted to take a walk to clear my mind. I went across the street to a park sat by a tree watching cars pass every now and then. Just beautiful morning weather. I noticed a truck driving down the left side of the park and turned to the street my back was facing. He waved as he passed, so I did too, thinking it was just a man going to work. I wanted to show I was okay. Then pulls off onto the right side of the park, stops, makes a U-turn to come back. Red flags instantly went off in my head, so I got up to start walking home. I looked back and saw he turned off the headlights, and now he was trailing me. I got to the front of my house, and he slowed down. I got a better look at his face, and he looked like the man who was harassing me before. The physical characteristics, his red baseball cap, just glared at me like I took everything in his life away from him. I got to the door and tried to barge in, but my father put the chain on in anger of me walking out, so I had to yell to him that I was being followed and to please open the door. He opened it and by then, the truck was gone down the street. I'm terrified to leave my home and I don't have a car to get anywhere. I have a bike, but I'm too scared to use that. I don't know who that man is, or was, or what his intentions were. But I live 
in paranoia, waiting. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, leave a like. Or if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, subscribe to the channel. I am going to upload more content like this, horror stories, horror narrations. Um, if you have some stories of your own that you want me to tell, um, send me an email down below. The last video has received so much love and I'm so thankful for that. So thank you guys so much for following me on this journey. Uh, it really opened my heart up. We got like 200 views and 20 subscribers from the last video. And it really shows that my effort and time that I put into researching these stories, finding these stories, recording them, and um, putting some music down, some pictures, uh, and such, that the work is really appreciated. So thank you guys so much. So, come. Let's get scared together.